Hello, my lovely people. Good morning to you and welcome to God's Love You channel, the home of news. If it is your first time of coming across this wonderful platform and you like what we are doing here, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications so that you'll be able to know when we upload a new video. It will also make YouTube to recommend our videos to you. Oh, say to go. <laughs> I want everybody to sit down and listen to this video with me. And I give my brother news post uh, credits on I go see on a that the northern youth <laughs> they have they don't declare <laughs> woto woto. In fact, let's listen. I don't want to talk too much. And after listening with me, you come to the comment section to tell us what you think. Thanks for watching. The Imo State Government has responded to the setting up of IDB camps in the state. And before that, let's look at what uh, Yerima is saying. Arewa Youth Consultative Forum has said that there will be war if South East rejects Northern Youths at the supposed IDB camp, that there will be war. We are asking for one thing. If you cannot bring development in the southeast, if you cannot bring railway, embassies, airports, um, government parastatals and functionaries in the southeast, why bring in IDP comes? That is the question that needs to be answered. And one of the problems we have is that if you don't answer these questions, you are looking for trouble. Okay, you are saying that the southeast is not safe. Before APC happened to Nigeria, before Hope Uzo Dima happened to nigeria before uh, the current cgn announced hope uzodima as winner of the last election the first election he had was the southeast not safe why didn't the federal government at that time bring in development in the southeast because some people are coming out to say that uh, it is because the southeast yeah yeah it's not safe it's insecure that's why the federal government is not bringing development to the southeast before APC. Why didn't we have railway networks in the southeast? Why didn't we have federal government development in the southeast? Infrastructures in the southeast. Why didn't we have then? Why was it not there then? That's the question. Answer me now. Answer me because so many people are being evil by saying that the southeast should not reject their fellow northerner from having any place in the region because if we believe that this is one nigeria then anybody has any right to settle at any place whatsoever some even were threatening to burn down a labor market if we are not going to allow some of these guys come as idps in the southeast now the same question would be asked sunday who sent people away from the community because these people were killing the Yorubas. As we speak in Ondo State, the Fulani are killing farmers. Farmers can't go to their farms. So would you want such in the Southwest? Would you want an IDP in the Southwest? Come to think of it, what is going to happen in the Southeast if you are bringing an IDP camp in the Southeast? Don't you think that is going to escalate the tension in the Southeast? We are not saying that you cannot come to the Southeast. You come you buy land, you rent house, you rent shop, as it is being done in other places. It is not that the government will now start sponsoring some people to come and leave. Everything about the Fulani is just the government should sponsor them. They are cattle. The government should create grazing routes, water resources, ranching, and all have you, while other Nigerians fend for themselves. If an Igbo man goes to any place, he is going to work legitimately. He's going to rent a house, he's going to buy a land, he's going to rent a shop, he's going to do his business and pay taxes. But that is not the same for a Fulani or some other northerner. They go there and they constitute nuisance. So we are not saying that they are not welcome. You are welcome, but don't come as IDP. Because we know the intention of the government. Abacha has said it, 24 hours the government cannot put out insecurity. The government has a hand in it. We know the intention of the government is to make sure that Three things happen. Number one, they can be able to infiltrate the southeast and make sure that the insecurity go, gets to another level, an unprecedented level. That's the plan of the government. And also, rigging elections, these IDPs, they vote without call. They are the ones that get sick 
an average easterner south easterner might not get a voter a voter's card but this idp they will get voter's card yes it is not whether it is going to be in one place if you allow an idp in the southeast it's going to spread this is if i were to be a politician and i want to win elections in the southeast like what is happening in the united states whereby immigrants are being brought in by the democrats so as to inflate the voter register that these immigrants are being brought in in their millions by the democrats will be used against the republican that is trump those that are being brought in by the government will eventually vote for the government in power that is the democrats that is um, the, the, the the candidate of democrat so bringing in idps into emo state then you are sure of other 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 people other idp centers in other places it might even stretch to acquire bomb idp is not development idp is not federal government infrastructure it is sensible if the Yorubas or the north we are to be in the position that the Igbos are in today they will even cry much more than we are crying now but just that because they are being wicked because of the hatred they have for the Igbo man they are telling you to accept idp would you accept idp in lagos would you accept we have idp in the southwest but is it a good development the south south region they have federal government development yes structures the southwest has the north has why is it that the southeast don't have cng conversion center none in the southeast federal airport none nothing no nothing of sort that necess that tells us that we are part of this country called nigeria but at the end of the day you want to bring in and I did become the people are saying no and you understand why the people are saying such you in our position would say no you are not telling nigerians not to come to the southeast the south is one of the safest place until apc happened to nigeria until buhari happened to nigeria the southeast is one of the safest place and i i also think that looking at the political structure they the, the government may want to pitch the north against the southeast because they feel that the North is calling the South East for an alliance against the Southwest. So how do we make these people come and fight? Let's try and bring IDP camps. We know that the South Easterners will reject it and the North will be anger, angered. And in that, ang in that angry situation, in that rivalry, they will renew hatred for, for each other. This one are, that they are loving each other against the Southwest and Tinubu because politically, People are saying that Atiku and Obi should come together against the Tunubu. That is an alliance of the North and the East, and it's going to go a long way. If this ticket moves on, if it's possible for an Atiku and Obi to come together and they lay hold of the government, the Southwest, the Yoruba, the Southwest will be marginalized. I've predicted this a long time that after Tunubu's eight years, what the Igbos are suffering, the Southwest will suffer. So bringing IDP camps in the southeast will also necessitate that the north and the east will clash. This is already happening. A Yerima have come to say there will be war if southeast reject northern youths in the region. We are rejecting IDPO. We are not rejecting North Northern youths. We are rejecting that development. That development will bring insecurity. Our military structure, our military whoever, officers, they, they, their, their judgment of recent, they bombed a village and they killed more than 30 persons. These are the people that make decisions for, for Nigerians. They made a decision to bring in repentant Boko Haram into the Nigerian army. These are the people that are making decisions for us. They're not making good decisions for the Southeast. Whoever thought of that, whoever even had to inscribe that in his or her or cerebellum, should not come close to the Southeast. We don't want IDB camps. Whether the Imo state government is debunking the fact that there was a, a, a plan to bring IDPs into the state. We know the government can lie. The government cannot be trusted. 
especially the government of Hope Osodima, has no backing of the people, no goodwill from the people, no trust. It's an illegitimate government in the eyes of Imo state people. Anybody who's an Igbo person will tell you that Hope Uzodima's government before their eyes is illegitimate. That is why the government the government the government or the governor should have in the first place come out to rectify the position and let transparency be the order of the day. Because it is a known fact that Hope Uzodima brought insecurity in the Southeast. And when such things fly like this, whether it is propaganda or conspiracy theory or whether, whether it's true or not, when such things are flying like this, people tend to believe because of the antecedent of the governor of that state. The governor has openly threatened the goodwill of the Igbo people. He has threatened. They see him as, they see him as an outcast. They see him as an Osu, someone that is not qualified to become an Igbo person. That should be banished from Igbo land. That is what the people that he is serving, that is how they see him as not part of them. So anything that comes from him, they are rejecting with full force. That's one thing about governors, these guys don't know. You need to win the good of the people. Whether you're a president, whether you're a governor, whoever you are, a leader in any society, an Oba, a chief, or whatever, in any society, you need to win the goodwill of the people. Let the people see you. As somebody that is working on their behalf you don't need to fake it you need to be you need to be sincere to the people but leaders of our generation they don't care about that they are not concerned whether you trust them or not they all want to foster their agenda lie manipulations and deceit that is the order of the day so if somebody comes out if the Imo state government comes out to say that it is a lie let it stay at it being a lie that nobody is coming it's just a recreational center a skill acquisition center for emo people let it become a lie because things like this will not just fly out without an iota of truth it won't just come out without some particles of truth in what these guys are saying before we knew you have started burning the place i am against you burning that place make your findings Speak to the government, engage the government, protest against it. That is the way to go. But having to burn that place is unbecoming of our youths in the southeast. We should not think of such actions. It's not wise of us. I heard it's an open university. It's a building. It's a structure that will be built by taxpayers' money. If we have Biafra, we still need to use funds to even still build such structures. Irrespective of the fact that the fragment has abandoned the southeast, we need to look at how we can be building the Southeast until the day of redemption comes. Don't mind anybody that is gaslighting you. They know how to gaslight. They have been living life of gaslighting. They have been feeding on fake news and distortion of stories, misinformation. They have been living in misinformation all their life. So what do you expect from some of our brothers at the other part telling us that uh, we, are, we, are not, we, are not, we are not accommodating? Something that they will not take. You are now being hypocritical to the extent, saying that Igbo land, they don't accept people. We accept people. Look at what happened in Kaduna. Yoruba community was being attacked in Kaduna, and nobody is saying, talking, saying anything about that. The houses, the northerners are attacking Yoruba community in Kaduna because they killed a, a, a young person. And you know how these northerners behave. So if the Igbos come and say, Yorubas are this and that, are this, are this, Yorubas are not welcoming they are, they are troublemakers how do you look at it somebody is a yoruba person was saying that don't bring idp to the southwest and that's what the Igbos are saying we are not saying don't bring northerners to the southwest we are saying don't bring idp to the southwest now if not for winning elections and not for creating disunity or creating more rivalry between the north and the east because the west is threatened I'm not a prophet, but I've seen it after Tinubu's eight years. See, anybody that is coming together to say that they want to join, uh, join together, you cannot stop. To, you know, you do know who Tinubu is. All these things they are, you are seeing, they are games. They are, it is a script that is being played. We are being entertained by the current government in power. They orchestrate everything. We are being entertained by the current government in power. The people that are playing the script are playing it very, very 
tacitly. They are very good at what they are doing. They are not concerned about development. They know that Nigeria cannot work. They are just buying time to consolidate on how they can take enough from Nigeria to build a region that will be preparing for Nigeria's exit. Because at the end of the day, Nigeria would all come to a point whereby we decide that let all go at several and different ways. The Yorubas will reject regionalism under Tinubu's regime until Tinubu finishes his tenure. Then you can see some Yorubas will come and be speaking English and gaslighting Nigerians, manipulating Nigerians that we want regionalism. If you are sincere about regionalism, why would a senator or me by Medele come out and say that no, regionalism for now? We know they not they are politicians. They cannot survive without political power in a secular Nigeria, in a united Nigeria. They cannot survive. If they are on their own, they will lose most of the benefits they get from Nigeria because they are the most that benefit from Nigeria's mineral resources, which is not even resided in their place, oil. The North are the most beneficiaries. So they will naturally not want uh, regionalism. And some of them is saying that regionalism will make sure that uh, we, we help the Igbos get. So these people don't want Igbos to have their freedom. That is just clear. Nobody should gaslight you. These people don't want Igbos to have their freedom. They don't like seeing Igbos independent. They are gaining from this country. The, in fact, those that are suffering now, when they start ripping or when they, when, they, when they are brought to the table to start eating Nigeria's wealth, they will forget what they have been fighting for. That is what is happening. The Southwest now don't want regionalism. All they want is to be well positioned to make from the country. When they have, they have positioned themselves here and there, they will now make from the country, build capacity, build experience, build ties across board, international ties, so many things added to that, get degrees and everything beautiful infrastructures in the southwest and they will be getting ready for an exit that is what is happening under Tinubu's regime nobody is interested in making life better for you because these people they know better than you and i if you are offering solutions to how nigeria can get better these people know better me and you we are not even in the system to understand some of the things the challenges and what have you they are there they have been there before and they are there now just that they would not do it because it is not going to be beneficiary to them. If Nigeria gets better, it is to their own disadvantage. If Nigerians are eating three square meals a day, if Nigerians can feed their families, pay their house rent, get all the good things of life, it is against them. They, will not, they don't feel comfortable with Nigerians having some of these things. And it's very important for us to know that we are running a, an economy, a one-sided economy. For the Southeast, we know that we are out of, we already know. We can survive like that, we are out of the box. We are out of the box, we don't ask questions, people don't answer. They don't even listen to, even hear what we are saying. You are bringing IDP camps to the Southeast. Why? What is the reason? Are we displaced? Or do you think that an Igbo man is like every other person that if he's displaced, he's looking for the government to come and help him fix one or two things? The Igbo man finds a way to survive. The Igbo man does not look like an internally displaced person. It is enough that they cannot, they cannot survive without the central power. If you take the power from the north, the north will start dwindling. They will start, start self-destruct. Self from inward, they will be just getting spoiled. They will be, and when something is going to get sour, if you take away power from the north, they don't have the self-sufficiency. The way their elites have positioned themselves in Nigeria, they cannot stand alone as we speak. If they will be standing alone, they need to take away that ideology, that uh, feudalism, that uh, monarchical system. That is going to draw them back. Like I tell you, the national cake is not enough for the senators and the House of Reps. So if you think that you are supporting the government that is interested on 
stealing, corrupt, and everything. The national cake will not get to you. Ah, uh, is Yoruba? Is Aosa? Is Igbo? You that you are supporting that you are a bricklayer. The national cake will not get to you and your family. Now, forty-three uh, ways I mean that uh, was brought by Buhari or was printed by Buhari. Nigerians and the families and children of unborn are going to be paying for the debt. That way that means Nigerians and their children unborn. The money that Buhari borrowed, 22 trillion naira, that the government of Tungu said that they have cleared. So it is going to be a 40 year, uh, are going to, we, they spread it for 40 years. We are going to be paying back that money with an interest to the central bank. So Nigerians and their families are the ones that are going to be paying for that money. So this is the government we subscribe for. So for those that are willing to understand what is happening in the South East, the South East is a safe place. The insecurity is caused by the government. The government doesn't want the South East to put its heads together so that they can continue their agenda. There's, there's enough gas, and gas is the tomorrow of our generation. Gas is the future. CNG, no CNG in the whole of South East. Nothing, no functional imports in the whole of South East. We are watching. Government intervention in South East is minimal. We are watching. But one day, something will happen and it will trigger a revolution. And that revolution will spread like wildfire. And it cannot be stopped. It might not be in Tinubu's regime, it might be in Tinubu's regime. But it's going to happen as swift. Remember what I, I just said. It is going to happen as swift. No war between anybody. Disregard the northern young man that has been calling for wars here and there. Disregard him. He does not hold any water. The house has no better not to be pushed by the Fulani again. They have been deceived a lot of times. And they have been killed by the Fulani. They have been dominated, dominated by the Fulani. So any move by the Fulani, let only the Fulani run it. And let's see what happens in the southeast.